My name is Zach Ochaga, and I'm the pastor of C6 Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Thank you so much for choosing to be a part of the service online today. If you are a guest, you've never been a part of our online service such as today or an in-person service, would you kindly go online and fill out a digital connection card letting us know that you are here today. And if there's any way we can pray for you, make sure to say so in the connection card and we'll pray for you. Before we dive into today's teaching, would you join us in a song? One of the ways that we worship God is with our singing. And in case you're not used to singing, just listen to it, pay attention, and, and, and follow along, and I'll be back with today's teaching. My good friend, Doug Hurt, would be leading us in a song today. It's your breath in our lungs. 
Welcome back. If we've not met, my name is Zach Ochaga, and I'm pastor of C6 Church. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are in the second part of a series titled, I Am a Messenger. I Am a Messenger. Before we go into the teaching, would you say a word of prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, here we are to listen to you. Here we are to receive from you. You said that people should not live by food alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. We're here to receive that word from you so that we can live by that word, we can grow on that word, and we can be the people you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're in the second part of our series titled, I'm a Messenger. And it, the premise is this, that Jesus came to earth on a mission for a mission. And before going back to heaven, before ascending back to heaven, he has sent us to continue the mission that he started while here on earth and because of that if you are a follower of jesus christ if you have placed your faith in jesus christ you are a messenger everybody has something that he or she celebrates i celebrate each time the teams that i root for win a game, or win a championship. I'm a soccer guy. I love soccer. I celebrate, eat, celebrate each time my team scores a goal, as a matter of fact. And, and I even celebrate more when they end up winning the game. You know, sometimes they score and, and don't end up winning the game because they were outscored <laughs> by the other team. Everybody has something that they celebrate. I celebrate whenever I achieve an important goal to me. The more important the goal is to me, the greater the celebration, the greater the intensity of my celebration of accomplishing the goal. Right now, I have a big goal for the month of March that I'm working on, and I'm going to celebrate once I accomplish that goal. I'm sure you know and understand what the feeling is like each time that you have a reason to celebrate. I'm reminded of a story a friend of mine has shared a few times when he was a kid that went, he and his parents went out into um, a, a mountainous park uh, area to hike. And in the cor course of the hiking, uh, he, he and his parents got separated and he was lost. And after a period of time, it hit the parents that, oh, we've lost. Deal. And they began to search and search and search and search and search, you know, for him and, and couldn't find him. And then later, one of the park rangers, you know, down at the bottom of the mountain saw this lost kid and then radioed up and said, hey, we have a lost kid here. And down came his parents. And when, when the parents came back and were reunited with him, the mom held him and hugged him, pulled him close, you know, and pulled him back. Why did you, why, what happened? Why did you, why did you stay away from us? Why did you, you know, uh, why didn't you keep us with us? And then we'll pull him back again and hug him and, you know, scold him and then pull him back again. She was excited. She was thrilled. She had, you know, it was mixed feelings of, hey, what happened? How do we lose you? And at the same time, excited and, and happy and rejoicing that she had found her boy again. You know what it is like when you lose something of value to you and you find it. We all have experienced what it means to lose something or misplace something of value to us and then finding it back later. Today, I want to speak to you on what I title, Value What Heaven Celebrates. 
value what heaven celebrates. Let's turn to the Bible and see what Jesus has to say about what heaven values and what heaven celebrates. In Luke 15 and verse 7, this is Jesus speaking, Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous per persons who need no repentance. Now this story is the story Jesus told about a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. And he was asking his audience a rhetorical question. If you were a shepherd with a hundred sheep and you lost one, wouldn't you go and look for that one? And after you found that one, you put that one on your shoulder and you come back rejoicing and telling your friends and neighbors, hey, I found my lost sheep. And Jesus said, that's the passage, the verse we just read, even so, just in the same manner, heaven experiences joy. Heaven celebrates over one sinner that repents than 99 righteous persons. So it is clear here that one thing that heaven values and celebrates is the repentance of one sinner. It is the, you know, last week we saw that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. So each time the lost is found by Jesus, like this shepherd finds the one that was lost, heaven rejoices and celebrates. Then immediately after that, Jesus tells the story of a woman with ten coins, and she loses one. And when she loses that one, what she does is she sweeps the whole house in search for it, and would not stop till she finds it. And when she finds it, what happens? Look at verse 10, Luke 15 and verse 10. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. She's excited and she celebrates the fact that she found her one lost coin. And, and Jesus is saying that is how it is in heaven. When one sinner repents, heaven is full of joy. There's a party going on in heaven. Heaven celebrates. There are a few things that stand out very clearly in the two verses that we've read, in Luke 15, verse 7 and verse, verse 10. Jesus talks about the one, the one sheep, the one coin. And he says each of them represent the one sinner. Jesus is not talking about a crowd. He was not talking about a crowd of people that were lost and the crowd coming to, 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 to repentance and putting their faith in him. He was talking about one. In other words, even if there are a hundred people who are lost, Jesus cares about the one. He cares about the individual. It's not just a large number of people. It is about each unique individual. Jesus, God, heaven cares about each unique individual that is a sinner and is lost. Jesus knows each person, such a person, by name. He knows the details of the person's life, and he cares about that one person. Like we saw last week, Jesus came to earth for such a one. Now, this can be applied to those of us who have already put our faith in Jesus Christ, that he was interested in us as individuals, and that is why he came to earth. And he kept searching till he found us. 
And today, you and I, if, we've put, if you've put your faith in Jesus Christ, have been found because he cares about you as an individual. Isn't it exciting to know that Jesus, Savior of the world, cares about you? Now, I want to share with you three ways to value what heaven celebrates. Three ways to value what heaven celebrates. Because if you are going to be the messenger that God wants you to be, if I am going to be the messenger that God wants me to be, I must, you must learn to value what heaven celebrates. And if you're listening to me right now, and you're not yet a follower of Jesus Christ, you've not yet put your faith in him, you may have been born into a Christian home, but you've not yet owned your faith. You might be a cultural Christian. You are a Christian simply because you were born into a family of Christians. You you have been in an environment of Christians. You go to church simply because that is what people in your family and people around you do. But you have not yet put your faith in Christ, which means you're not yet saved. Because you have not owned your faith. You have not made the decision to put your faith in Christ and follow him yet. What you're doing is just out of uh, a, a culture because that's, that's just what happens culturally. I want to challenge you today to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Own your faith for yourself. Start a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you are a follower of Christ, you've put your faith in Christ. How do you celebrate, how do you value what what heaven celebrates? You know, how do you value what heaven celebrates? I want to share with you three ways to do that. Number one, have a heart for the lost. Have a heart for the lost. We see in the story that the shepherd left 99 sheep. You know, some people think that, oh, he just left them by themselves. And, and, you know, that would have been uh, exposing them to more danger. No, that was not what happened. And that was not not how uh, shepherding worked, you know, in in, in, in that time. Shepherds had under shepherds as well. They, they, they They had people that worked for them and with them. And so he must have left the 99 with an under shepherd. He must have left the 99 with someone to care for them. While he went, the shepherd went in search for the one. The reason that the shepherd went in search for the one was because he had a heart for that one that was lost. The shepherd didn't want to settle with 99 and say, well, I have 99. 99 is a large number way larger than one, it's okay. I'll just be content with the 99. No, he had a heart for any of his sheep that would be lost. And so he went in search for that one sheep. If we are going to value what heaven celebrates, we must have a heart for the lost. You must have a heart for the lost. I must have a heart for the lost. When we talk about the lost, remember from last week's teaching, we're talking about someone disconnected from God, disconnected from the Father. We're talking about someone who has rebelled against God, rebelled against the Father. We're talking about someone who is not a follower of Jesus Christ. The person is lost. So have a heart for the lost. Number two, place a priority on the lost. If you're going to value what heaven celebrates, number two, place, a, place priority on the lost. Think about it. One lost sheep, if it was not because the shepherd placed priority on that lost sheep, he wouldn't have gone looking for that lost sheep. I want you to think about you know, what that journey looked like. I want, you to th- I, I want you to imagine that the shepherd was not going to places of convenience. The shepherd was not going to places of comfort. The shepherd was not going to places of ease. The places that the shepherd went in search for the sheep were places that likely the sheep must have wandered away from the flock. So it was the lost sheep that determined where the shepherd went in search for the sheep. 
he may have gone off track he must he may have gone through bushes and gone through you know uh, thorny places he, he may have gone across rocky places he may have wherever the shepherd believed that the sheep may have wandered away through the shepherd will go through those places irrespective of how uncomfortable they were so he could find the lost sheep when 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 the woman lost her coin she she must have gone down on her knees to sweep under places in the house she must have you know looked in nooks and crannies it was not about comfort it was about the priority she placed on the lost coin if we're going to value what heaven celebrates we must place priority on the lost and priority is displayed by our actions priority is displayed by our actions if the shepherd had said you know oh uh that lost sheep is my priority that lost sheep is my priority and yet never left to look for the lost sheep never did anything to look for the lost sheep then it would have meant that the lost sheep was not his priority. If, if the woman would have said, oh, that lost coin is my priority, that lost coin is my priority, but never did anything to search and to look for the lost coin, then it would have meant that the lost coin was not her priority. How do we know that the lost sheep was his priority? The shepherd said, hey, you, Watch these 99. I'm going to look for that one lost sheep. These ones are safe. I'm going to look anywhere it, anywhere it will take me. I am going till I find that lost sheep. That, the actions showed that the lost sheep was his priority. When that woman began to turn things over in the house and to sweep the entire house, it showed that the lost coin was her priority. If you are going to celebrate, value what heaven celebrates. If I am going to value what heaven celebrates, I must make the lost my priority. And my actions will show. The third way to value what heaven celebrates is this. Celebrate the repentance and salvation of the lost celebrate the repentance and salvation of the lost yeah, i mean look at the story when the shepherd found that lost sheep that one lost sheep he celebrated he, he, was, he was excited he rejoiced he called others to join him in celebrating when the woman lost found the lost coin she celebrated and, 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 and Jesus said, in the same way, in the same manner, each time a sinner repents, heaven celebrates. Heaven rejoices. There is joy in heaven. The angels rejoice. God rejoices. Because of one sinner that repents. W remember I said we all celebrate something? What is it that we celebrate? Do we, do we celebrate a promotion? Do we celebrate a raise in salary? Do we celebrate a new car? Do we celebrate a bigger house? Do we celebrate you know, the birth of a child or, or of a grandchild? W w what do we celebrate? Do, do, do you celebrate, do I celebrate the repentance and salvation of someone who was lost? When someone says, today, I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I turn away from my sinful life. I turn away from a life of sin. And today, begin to follow Jesus. Do we celebrate? If we're going to value, if you're going to value what heaven celebrates, if I'm going to value what heaven celebrates, each time someone repents, and get salvation from Jesus. We shall celebrate that. You know, 
there there have been times in our family and i'm sure it, it's it's it, it's occurred in everyone's family where where you, your kids get sick and, and at various different times you know each of our kids have fallen sick and and each time any of our kids fall sick it's not the same we we it seems that sickness causes us us to lose that person the real person the person that this kid that we knew to be to be a lively animated vivacious you know a strong appetite all of a sudden that child is weak lying down not able to move around it's just like we've lo- we lost the person and as parents, Holly and I will be concerned, you know, that, that this child is not healthy, that this child is not eating well, that this child has lost his or her appetite, you know, and it, it, it's, it's just a concern. But then one day comes, and the child gets better. The child recovers. And then all of a sudden, the child is out of his or her sick bed. The child is animated once more, excited, talking with, with, with the tone and volume that we, they're accustomed to speaking, they, they jumping around and playing around and smiling and full of energy and zest and animated and vivacious and lively again. And as parents, we are excited. We would, we would be so happy. And we have, a, we have a way of saying it at home. We would say, we have our, and put in the name of the child there, we have our junior back. Junior is back. Or whichever child is back. It is, it is the same way. When, when, when Jesus tell the, tells the story of, of the lost sheep and, 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 and how the shepherd left 99 to look for that one or the lost coin, you know, Jesus is not saying, oh, the 99 are of no value. That's not what he's saying. But because of the heart that God has for the lost, he already has the other 99. Because of the heart that God has for the lost, when you have that lost one back, it calls for rejoicing. It calls for celebration. And, and this is what happens each time, if we have a heart for the lost in the ways of God, if we have a heart for the lost, each time someone lost, someone far from Christ, someone who is disconnected from God, someone who, who has rebelled against God and decided and chosen to live life his way or her way and not God's way, each time that the person repents, and to repent means to to, to make a decision to turn away from your lifestyle, from your choices, from, from, from running life the way you want to run it, to Jesus Christ, to God, and saying, hey, I'm no longer running my life. I'm going to let you run my life. I'm going to now live my life to please you and not to please myself. That is called repentance. Each time that happens, that is called repent. And that's what the Bible says so many times. Repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. Now, here's the good news. Because Jesus is actively in search for the lost, it is important for you, if you're listening to me today and you've not yet put your faith in Christ, to let him help you with the repentance. Because what happens is that for each of us who, who, who have repented, Jesus Christ was working in our hearts and in our lives to say, hey, this is not the way. This is not the way. You need to come back here. And how we, how we, 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 we allow him to do it is we say, yeah, Lord, I, I, okay, I surrender to you. I surrender and I yield my life to you. I, I'm not going to live my life on my own terms anymore. I'm going to live them on your terms. And that is repentance. That is repentance. I don't know where you're at in your faith. I don't know where you're at in following Christ. Are you pursuing a lifestyle that does not please God? Jesus is saying, repent. Turn, turn, turn. Turn from your, 
from, from your ways and back to me, and I'll help you. That, this is why I'm here. That's what Jesus is saying. So now that we know how to, uh, to, to value what heaven celebrates, what is the message? Remember, I'm a messenger. You're a messenger. What then is the message that he has sent you with? Remember in our last week's teaching, we said, we saw from Scripture that Jesus said that the way the Father had sent him, he has also sent us. What is the message he sent us with? Let's look at Luke 24 and 45 through 47. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. Jesus opened the minds of these two men who, who he met on the road to emails and he said to them thus it is written that the christ that is himself jesus christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from jerusalem i want you to notice that phrase repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name so this is the message this is the message that he has given you you're a messenger i'm a messenger if you've put your faith in jesus christ and this is the message there is forgiveness there is forgiveness of sins in jesus christ there is forgiveness of sins in jesus christ i don't know what it is I, I, I don't know what it is you're going through. I don't know what your story is. You know, and I don't know what life that you're living. I don't know what life you're living. But here's the good news. If you are living a life of sin, a life that does not please God, there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. There is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Now, I want to share with you a way. I want to equip you with a way that you can share this message. Remember, you're a messenger, I'm a messenger. I want to equip you with a way that you can share this message with others. At the same time, I, I want us to do this activity so that you, you experience it yourself. And if you're not yet in a place where you've put your faith in Jesus Christ, would you just, if you don't mind, work with me, <laughs> okay? Work with me on this, and let's see where, where, where it takes us. I want you to imagine a ladder, because... Uh, the reason I'm saying this, if, you, if, you, if you're able to draw, I want you to draw a ladder. A ladder with rungs, okay? I want you to draw a ladder with rungs. If you're driving or you're, you're not in a place, a position to, 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 to draw, I, I want you to just imagine it in your mind. I want you to imagine a ladder with rungs, right? At the bottom, at the bottom of the ladder, I want you to write or imagine bad and hell bad and hell and then at the top of the ladder i want you to imagine good and heaven good and heaven you can write it if you can write good slash forward slash heaven or just imagine it good forward slash heaven now i want you to think who are some of the worst people on earth some of, some of the most terrible human beings that have ever lived on earth. Can you think of two? One, two, three? All right. Can you say them out? Wherever you're at, can you just say, say the names out? And if you can write, could you just write them down? So maybe you thought of Hitler. Maybe you thought of Stalin. I don't know who, you know. Write their names down there at the bottom of the ladder. Now, who do you who who would you say are some of the most some of the best people? You know, permit me to say the most good people. Let me put it that way. But some of the finest human beings, good people that you will put somewhere at the top of the ladder or close to the top of the ladder. Can you think of anybody? Say one name, two names, write them there. I don't, I, I, I don't know who you would say. You know, maybe you would say Mother Teresa. I don't know. 
Maybe you say the Pope, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you say Billy Graham, I don't know. Whoever. Just put, put the name there. Now, here's the next thing I want you to do. I want you to put, depending on how good you think you are, I want you to put yourself somewhere on that ladder between the bottom and the top. Where would you put yourself? So if you think yourself to be fairly good, maybe you're somewhere on the top half of the ladder. And if you're listening to me and you think, oh, I, I'm so bad, maybe you're somewhere in the lower part of the ladder. That's where, that's, that's where you put yourself. Now, here's my question. L look at where you put yourself or think about where you put yourself on the ladder, on that ladder. How much do you have to be able to climb from where you're at to be good enough to get to heaven? I want you to think about the distance. Think about the distance. What are your chances of being good enough to make it to heaven? All right, thank you so much for working with me. Here's what I want you to do now. If you can, draw a big X over the entire diagram on the ladder. Or in your mind, just put a big X on it. You know what that means? There is no, it's called the morality ladder. There is no ladder that will take you to heaven. There is no ladder that would take me to heaven. There is no morality ladder that can take you or take me to heaven. In other words, you cannot be good enough to make it to heaven. I cannot be good enough to make it to heaven. And you might go, wait, wait a minute. What are you talking about here, Zach? Let's see what the Bible has to say. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 9. And if you can, I want you to read together with me. One to go. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works so that no one may boast. If you don't mind, let's read it one more time. And where it says you, I want you to say I. Okay? Personalize it. Let's read again. One to go. For by grace I have been saved through faith. And this is not my own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works so that no one, so that I cannot boast. Now listen. The only way that one can make it to heaven is by the forgiveness of your sins. Remember the passage we read in Luke, 40, uh, Luke 24, 45 through 47, that this is the message that we've been given, that there is forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ. Jesus paid the price. So as a result of that, you can be saved by grace. Grace means you could not earn it. Grace means you did not earn it. Grace means it is a gift from God. Grace does not mean there was no price. Grace means that though it is free for you, the price was paid by someone else, Jesus Christ. So Jesus paid the price for your salvation, for my salvation. Jesus paid the price for your forgiveness and my forgiveness. And how do we then access this grace? This free gift from God. It is by faith. It is through faith. Faith in who? Faith in Jesus Christ. By placing your faith in Jesus Christ, you have access to this grace, this free gift of God, and all your sins are forgiven by reason of faith 
in Jesus Christ. And because it is a free gift, because you could not be good enough to make it to heaven, because you had to be forgiven to make it to heaven, you can't boast. You cannot boast. And that is why I told you to cancel, X out that morality ladder. Because there is no ladder, no morality ladder that you can climb up to get to heaven. You cannot be good enough to get to heaven. You only need to be forgiven enough to get heaven. And that forgiveness can be found only in one person, Jesus Christ. So, this is how, this is a tool that you can use in sharing the good news, the gospel, with your friends, with family members who may not have put their faith in Christ. And if you have not yet put your faith in Christ, would you do that today? Would you do that right now? Would you say, Lord Jesus, I, I, I receive your free gift of the forgiveness of my sins, your free gift. Of salvation for me I place my faith in you and I choose that from today I would not run my life and live life on my own terms but I'll let you run my life and live life on your terms and I believe if you if you mean that with your heart that salvation is yours today would you please email me at hello at c6church.com to let me know I want you to think about this. If you and if me, if I would value what heaven celebrates, what a difference it would make. What a difference it would make. Satan and hell will be devastated. And God and heaven would be so pleased that we share their values and their priorities. Would you pray with me? But before you pray with me, I want to say this. One of the things that we do as followers of Jesus Christ is we give, right? We give to God because everybody worships something. Everybody worships someone. And whatever it is that you worship, you give to it. If you worship sports, you give to sports. You spend your money on sports. If you, if you worship a hobby, you spend your money on the hobby. If, 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 you, if you worship anything, you, sp you spend on it. And if you worship God, you give to the things of God. So if you are a guest today, don't give. Don't give today. Don't give to C6 Church. But if you call C6 Church home, you know that one of the ways we worship God is by giving. Taking off our money and giving to God. I, I, all you need to do is to look at uh, the screen below and be able to give. But I want us to pray now. Would you pray? Would you pray with me? Would you say this after me, please? Lord, purify my heart, motives, and priorities. Help me value what you value and make them a priority in my life. Help me have a heart for the lost and to make them a priority in my life. I make myself available to you. Work in and through me to continue your mission of seeking and saving the lost. Work in and through C6 Church to continue, to continue your mission of seeking and saving the lost. Bless us with the joy of seeing thousands of people place their faith in you and follow you the rest of their lives. Amen. Thank you for spending this time with us. God bless you. Have a great week and see you next week. Bye.